Okay, see Lindelof videos. Determining if a function is continuous at a given value, just to be clear about what continuity means. Continuity, I hear all these people say, oh, yeah, it means that the function goes on in both directions forever. That's not what it means at all. What it means is, is there any gap? Is there any is there any domain value that makes the function undefined? So that's where we're going to go here. So we have to be a little bit careful to make sure that we understand what it is that we're looking for. So here we go. Here we go. Here's our function right here. Our function is this f of x is equal to this. And they're asking us at very specific places. And if we plug any either of these values in, if we plug in f of 0, we get 0 over 0 squared plus 3 times 0, which is equal to 0 over 0. The top 0 doesn't matter, and the numerator, what matters is the one in the denominator, and we know if the denominator goes to 0, the function is undefined, and that means we have a discontinuity there. So there's a discontinuity there we have to talk about in a minute. The second one is if we go to f of, what is it, negative 3 or f of 3? Yeah, f of negative 3, we get negative 3 over negative 3, sorry, negative 3 squared. That's not how that works at all, you guys. Sorry. Sorry, I can do better. Ready? Negative 3 squared plus 3 times negative 3. Be careful here because this is negative 3 squared, not the opposite of 3 squared. So this gives us 9 minus 9 equals 0. We get negative 3 over 0 again, undefined. So I'm going to look at this. I'm like, OK, I have these two discontinuities here. What's the truth about them? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and I'm going to look at the function. I'm going to ask myself, can this be simplified? So I'll put simplified, question mark. I'm saying, can it be simplified? And I think that it can. We have x over, and I'm going to go ahead and just do this now, x, x plus 3. Isn't this exactly the same function as we had before? Isn't this perfectly, right? x times x is this x squared here. x times 3 is this 3x here. What I'm trying to do is simplify this, and we can see that x over x is 1. So what we have now is we have 1 over x plus 3. Right? And if we look at this now, if we put 0 in, it's no longer discontinuous. So we say that we have a removable, we have a removable discontinuity. I'm not going to write it out. At x equals 0. Why is it removable? Because after we simplified it into this form right here, that 3 is no longer a discontinuity, but it exists. And we, the way we write it out is like this. We show it as a whole right here. right? So the second one, in our simplified form of x over x plus 3, now we can see in our simplified form, we still cannot have x is equal to negative 3. So x cannot equal negative 3. So we have, it's called an infinite, actually, infinite discontinuity at x equals negative 3. This is super important. Well, it's not super important, if I'm being honest with you. But it's important to know the definition of infinite discontinuity. The, the infinite nature has to do with the fact that it's going infinitely high or infinitely low, right? So that's what that is. I don't know how we're doing for time. Let's go ahead and do this last one really quickly. And there's two ways to do this. If there's a graph, we can see this. We can see that our graph, the graph of x of y equals negative 2, is this part of it right here. And the, the part that is the x minus 5 part is right here. And we can see that they intersect. And if they intersect, well, then there's no gap, right? So we could have a maybe called a jump gap here. So we know that this is continuous. We could also do this testing with limits. So I could take both these pieces and say, I want to assess the limit as x goes to, remember it goes to 3 here, goes to 3 of the function negative 2. And that limit is negative 2. Well, that's good. What, so this would be the, what is this? This is the left-hand limit. So this is minus. And then we could take the right-hand limit. So we could say, I want the limit. And now we're going to use this function of x minus 5 as x goes to 3, 
right hand limit means starts at the right and moves this way, right? So if we start at the right and we move this way. We also, so I'm going to actually assess this limit by saying 2 minus 5 equals negative 3. Whoops, this one should have been negative. That's, I was like, what in the hell just happened? That's because of the issue, guys. I'm sorry. This should have been 3. It goes to 3. I was like, what in the world just happened? Sorry. Right? Is negative 2. So the limits match, right? So we have continuity here. So this function is con is continuous. And they're asking us very specifically, so at x equals 3, right? So it is continuous at x equals 3. OK, you guys, that's all I have for you. I hope that this was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please, please, please let me know. Uh, and if you haven't already subscribed, please do. Thanks. Appreciate it. Peace.